the Van Cleve Bulldogs, who have the white jerseys and the white pants, blue helmets. There's Hancock behind the Hawk Tunnel. Look like they're kneeling down praying. Quick little prayer before this thing gets kicked off. Good uh, captains for both teams, a good round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Trying to see if this is YouTube. <clears throat> see if this YouTube thing works. Looks like the volume is working on the YouTube, guys. So we're pumped in through the YouTube channel if you want to follow the game. If you're not able to watch the game and you're at home for whatever reason, go ahead to Hancock County School District on YouTube, and the game should be live right now. You should have the little scoreboard in the left-hand corner. It should be showing uh, the captains at midfield. Looks like the captains were number 11, Tana Ladner, number 8, Dylan Peterson. Dylan Peterson, number one, Kobe Kern. Number and, 61, Landon DeWitt. And number 61, there you go, Dre. Dre knows the team. He was on it last year. And here come the Hawks. Here come your Hawks, guy, led, led by number 41, Xavier Gagne, and his younger brother, number 31, Christoph, Christoph Gagne. Gagne. The Gagne brothers. They're always fun to watch on the field, Dre. I oh, like those yeah. two guys. Two good kids. Xavier had him an interception last week. Then you got the Van Cleve Bulldogs running onto the field. There will be a little bit of a delay between uh, the radio and the YouTube. But we're ready, guys. This is what we've been waiting for all these months building up. First home game. Here. First home game of the season. And in case you guys did not know or weren't aware, we have the voice of the Hawks back as well. Dwayne Bremer, Double D, over to the right of us on the other side of the wall. And he just did his famous, it's Friday night in Kill, Mississippi. We got Hancock that's going to be receiving the ball. Back deep, it looks like we have number four, Mason Kramer, and number 33, Destin Coleman. Kicking off for Van Cleve, looks like to be number 30. Gavin Waltman. Gavin Waltman, number 30? Yes. Or is that 36? That looks like 30 to me. Gavin Waltman kicking off for the... Looks like he's uh, got it angled a little bit, Dre, like he's going to do like a little sky kick to the, uh, the far side of the field. Yeah, the Hawks are shifted that way, Mason Kramer and Destin Coleman. Destin, uh, I mean, Mason scooting up a little bit. Oh, they squib kick it, and it's picked up by Zach Gulong, but... Flag blown right away. It may have been an offside on the kickoff. We know a thing or two about that last year. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was weird. Well, not the way you want to start the game for Van Cleve. Not at all. Really excited to see um, this Hancock offense first. Usually, you you know you. Most times, uh, I like to, to go on defense, but I guess in this situation, he at home, let's, let's, let's get some fireworks started. Why not, especially with the explosive offense of the Hancock Hawks. So, uh, 30 looks like he's going to tee it up and try it all over again, and I think Hancock's definitely going to be expecting it. In the middle is Zach Gulong, Jeffrey Hopgood, and he kicks it a little bit more sky kick this this time and Gulon picks it up, finds a hole, bounces to the outside, jukes a guy out of his cleats and brings it across midfield to about the 41 yard line of Van Cleve. And Drake, this is exactly what you want. Excellent field position. Prime right field position. Anytime, Prime. anytime you start with the ball on the other side of the opponent's 50 right away, it's it's destined for greatness on this drive. I, I'm, I'm calling three plays, right? I mean, that's what I'd like to see that too. Moran in the shotgun. Two, two to his left. Running back to his left. Hands it off to Gulong on the right side. Picks up about two, three yards, and, and he's met by a host of Bulldogs. Number 15, it looks like. Ethan Davis. 
Ethan Davis. Looks like a pretty big kid. Uh, 6'4", 220. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me it looks big, so 6'4", 220, yeah. That's, that's pretty big. So bring up second and eight for the Hawks. Maybe shouldn't have called three plays, Dre, but I would have I liked to see go right up top first play on the, after a return like that. Kramer in motion to the from right to left. Morian looking to throw. Has Neil Acker wide open. Oh, and in and out, out of, out his, of hands. his hands. And 27 on the, on the pass defense. Looked at Neil and said, you're not catching anything on me tonight. I have to beg the different guy. I think he's going to catch a few. Yeah, I would beg the different too. So, going to bring up third and long for the Hawks. Putting them in a sticky situation right away after such a great return by Zach Gulag. Warren in the shotgun. Two receivers to his left. One to the right. Running back to his left. Kramer in motion right to left. Hands it off to Kramer. He gains the edge. He's being tracked, but he puts a little stutter step on number 26 and picks up the first down for about a 15-yard carry. 15-yard carry for Kramer and the Hawks. First down. There's that shiftiness that he has. He's very, he's, he's sneaky shifty. That brings up first and 10 from Hawks. Morin in the shotgun. Gets the snap. Hands it off to the right side of Gulan. Got a blocker. Hits the edge. Turns it inside. Nice, nice block on the outside by number 11, Tanner Ladner. And that's going to bring it inside the, inside the 10, folks. Well, you called, you called three plays. It's, you didn't get it, but close enough to it. Maybe a few over. About a 15-yard carry for Goulong. So bring up first and 10 at the 12. My apologies. Fakes the handoff. Throws it wide open. Neil Acker. And that's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. Moran to Acker for 12 yards. There goes that connection. Moran to Acker. First pass. No, second pass. And it's a touchdown for the Hawks. Moran to Neil Acker. Finn Cowan looking to kick the extra point. Snap good, hold good. And it's blocked. Got in there. Got in there, got blocked. So Hancock leaves early six to nothing. I don't know who shot through the gap right there, but that was a great effort. Hancock leads early, six to nothing in the first quarter, and we'll be right back after these messages. Physical therapy has evolved into specialized care for patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Dr. Jameson Dodd with Dodd Therapy Center in Picayune is LSVT Big certified for treatment of Parkinson's disease. LSVT Big trains people with Parkinson's to use their body more normally and improves movements for any activity, whether small motor tasks like buttoning a shirt or large motor tasks like getting up from a sofa or chair or maintaining balance while walking. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call today at 769-242-2636 or stop by at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. It's Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. And your Hawks lead early 6 nothing in the first quarter with 10 minutes and 33 seconds left on the clock. And it was a 12-yard touchdown pass from Moran to Acker on a slant route to get the Hawks up on the board. Looks like number 15, a uh, six-foot-four linebacker, Ethan Davis. 15, my apologies, is the, who shot the gap and blocked the extra point. So hopefully the Hawks uh, can make up for that on the next score. Line, line uh, Finn Cowan has it on the tee, ready to kick it off. And I think we get another little flag, this time on the Hawks for maybe offsides. We were trying to sky kick in that. We usually don't do those. We, nope. we let Finn. Let Finn use his leg, boot it. And that is what happened, folks. Offsides. So we're going to back it up five and tee it up again and kick it all up, kick it over again. So. Main guy we're going to be looking uh, 
to watch. I think he changed his number. I think he's going to be number one. Peterson. Yes. John Peterson. So that's who we're going to be looking for in this offense for Van Cleef. See if we can hold him in check. Quarterback is going to be Hunter Parker, number two. So, Cowan. Sky kicks it again. Looks like it's grabbed by number 12. There you go. He finds a little room on the outside, and he has a nice little return. Tackled by number number three, Jasper Talley. And he's going to bring it to almost the 50 at the 46 of Van Cleef. So, pretty good starting position right there for the Bulldogs. If I remember correctly, Van Cleve ran like a little, uh, like a little power eye, but it looks like they're coming out with four wide receivers right here. Looks like Parker in the shotgun, two receivers to his right, two is to his left, and it looks like Peterson shifts from the running back position to the slot, and it looked like that was a false start on Peterson. He flinched while he was in the slot. Looks like it's going to probably back up the Bulldogs for five yards. So, helps the Hawks there, put a little pressure on Van Cleves. It's going to be first and 15 at about the 42-yard line. Same formation, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Parker in the shotgun, this time Peterson to his right. Parker gets a snap, looks like they're going to run a quarterback draw. And he picks up about four, probably four or five, probably gets back to the line of scrimmage right there, folks, to bring it second and ten. So second and ten for the Bulldogs at about the 48-yard line. And this is the Van Cleve offense I'm used to seeing. Fullback and the halfback, I formation. Straight up power eye. Parker on the center. Number six at fullback. Peterson in halfback. Little power pitch to the right side. Peterson finds a finds the edge. Picks up about seven, maybe eight on his first carry. Gonna bring up third and short for the Bulldogs. So you gotta have somebody crashing down on that. Like I said in the pregame, when they make themselves one-dimensional, you know they're gonna run the ball. You know, when they make, when, when they, when they, and I remember that little power pitch. They ran that thing 30 times last year. So follow your keys, follow your guards. And follow, follow number one because he's gonna have the ball. Yeah. Parker in the, underneath the center. Same play to the left side. Hancock tries to crash down. But Peterson picks up about six in a Van Cleef Bulldog first down, bringing it to about the 38-yard line of Hancock. I mean, you gotta honor the pass. You gotta, you gotta be, you gotta respect that he could possibly come up and throw it. But you know, eye formation, Parker and in the center. Man in motion from left to right. Power pitch to the right side of Peterson again. Peterson catches the edge. He's pretty fast. It looks like he picks up about six, maybe seven on the carry. Gonna bring up Xavier Gagne forces him out of bounds and gets credit for the tackle. So about six yards, gonna be a second and a long four. Four. When Parker in the shotgun, they're probably going to pitch it to the left this time. Try to give him more room to run. Nope, they headed fullback up to the fullback dive. on a dive. <laughs> tried, to, tried to run a trap right there, and it got shut down right away. Hancock closed the gaps down. Maybe gained a half a yard. Going to bring up third and, third and about three. Might have gained a yard on the play. Going to bring up third and three. Hawk defense faced with another third down. You got to imagine maybe uh, Van Cleef goes for it on fourth down if they don't get the third down. Play yeah, right there. Fourth and, if it's fourth and short. I'm thinking they're going to do a power pitch to the left. 
Nope, power pitch to the right. right, and he's stuffed in the backfield. Moeller maybe line of scrimmage, and he's tackled by 27. Jeffrey Hopgood in the backfield, tackle for loss. Going to bring up fourth, and he might have lost a yard right there. there it looks it like. looks like he did lose a yard. Let's see what Van Cleve's going to do in fourth and short. Looks like Van Cleve's electing to go for it here. On the road, you got to make plays. You know, you got to you got to make bold decisions like this. And being on the road right now in this hostile environment, this this these Hawk fans can get hostile. They can get loud. Now it looks like the Van Cleve coach wants to think it over. And we'll be right back after these messages. Dr. Cynthia Jean Pierre for the Highland Center for Women's Health. It's really important to have a strong OB department in this community because you want them to feel safe where they can talk to you about anything medically, anything going on at home that can affect how we take care of them. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. Please call 601-358-9400 or visit highlandch.com. Welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Bringing you the game live from WRJW, and you can check us out on the YouTube, Hancock County School District. Search Hancock County School District on YouTube, and we got the video streaming on there. So it's going to be fourth and a long three for Van Cleve, and they're in a really power formation. It's like there's two fullbacks and a halfback. Imagine they're running in here. Do a power pitch. And Peterson fumbled it. He fumbled the ball, folks. And that's going to be a Hawk recovery by number two. Two, Finn Cowan. Number two, Finn Cowan. And great defensive play right there by the Hawk defense to force a turnover on Peterson. It kind of reminded me of last year when Dion fumbled it in the end zone. You know, they were driving. They were right there. And he just coughed it up. Sometimes, you know, being fast really doesn't mean much if you can't hold on to the ball. More in in the shotgun. Hands it off around the right side. Bulldog defense comes up stingy right there and holds it looks like Gulong to maybe back to the line of scrimmage and no game. <laughs> Gonna bring up second, maybe was even a loss of a yard or half a yard. So gonna bring up second and 11 for the Hawks. Moran in the shotgun. Two receivers to his right. Running back to his right. Wing back to his left. Man in motion, left to right. Kramer. Looking to throw a screen. The Acker. Nice block by, nice block by, uh, Jason Kramer. I was gonna say Gabriel Kramer. <laughs> his dad. Nice block by Mason Kramer. Nice pickup right there. Was about a 10 yard reception. Gonna bring up third and one. Very short one, it looks like. You gotta imagine we're gonna give that uh, that little switch play or whatnot to Gulong right here and just let him use his power. Let him use the power to run behind this big Hawk offensive line. So, Morin in the shotgun, two receivers to the left, running back to his left. Did he draw the defense off sides? Looks like he got back in time. And off to Gulang. Gulang finds a wide hole on the right side. Puts his head down and picks up about. Was about 12 yards on the carry? <laughs> 14 yards to Gulang in the first down. Bringing the ball to about the 47 yard line for Hancock. So first and ten, Hancock. Heat timeout. Six out. minutes. Good call, Dre. Heat timeout right there. And we'll be right back after these messages. Craving a breakfast toaster or French toast sticks? Make it a meal and step up your breakfast with tots and a cold beverage. Sonic Drive-In has the perfect portable breakfast, and it's the perfect way to start your day. And at Sonic Drive-In in Picayune, you can stop by any time because breakfast is served all day. Sonic Drive-In of Picayune on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North. Start your day Sonic style with happy eating at its best. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In of Picayune. Destination delicious. 
All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. And we're live here at Brett Favre Field in Kill, Mississippi, where your Hancock Hawks lead the Van Cleve Bulldogs six to nothing and are driving. It's first and ten, five minutes and 48 seconds up on the clock. Hawks are going left to right on your radio dial. We got Moran in the shotgun. Looks like Destin Coleman to his left checking that is in. Destin Coleman. So put a little bit of speed back there. Not that Gulag don't have speed, but, it, you know, a little bit more speed. Hand off to Coleman. Right side wide open. You're not going to catch You're Destin not Coleman. It. He's gone. Destin Coleman catch is him. gone. And that was 53 yards. 53 yard touchdown for Destin Coleman, number 33 for your Hawks. Kids electric. That's it. That's back to back weeks of 50 yard plus touchdowns. Yep. What a pickup. <laughs> Not a pickup, but you know. <laughs> I'm glad the kid uh, came to Hancock. That's all I can say. I am too. So, 53 yard touchdown by Destin Coleman. First carry. Hancock not electing to go for for two after the uh, blocked extra blocked extra point after the first touchdown. Cowan I mean that hole was wide open. I don't Yeah. There was nobody that was gonna catch him. No, nah, there's no catching him. Once he gets to the he second was, level, he's gone. He was untouched. Yeah. The only person that touched him was Dylan Moran <laughs> when he handed the ball off. He got the ball, found the hole, and then he turned on the Jets. Um, so your Hawks lead right now 12 to 0 at home versus the Van Cleve Bulldogs. Trying to see what the White Caps trying to figure out. Cowan trying to redeem himself after the might be the first time I've ever seen one of his extra points blocked. Kid's got a heck of a leg on him. For sure. Pretty dang accurate as well. They keep looking at the scoreboard for some reason. Maybe a clock issue? All right, well, we'll be right back after these messages. Hi, I'm Jason Pikett. As your local Allstate agent, providing protection that fits your life is something I take personally. I'm committed to learning about your needs and personalizing protection to meet them. From bundling your home, auto, and life insurance with ease to evaluating optional coverage based on your protection needs, I can build an insurance proposal that fits your life. Are you in good hands? Contact me, Jason Pigott, today for a free quote. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Vehicle and Property Insurance Company. Life insurance offered through Allstate Life Insurance Company and Allstate Assurance Company, Northbrook, Illinois, and American Heritage Life Insurance Company, Jacksonville, Florida. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. Snap is good, hold is good, and this time the extra point is good by Finn Cowan. That'll bring your score, Hancock 13, Van Cleve 0. Leading, early, leading late in the first quarter with five minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. Big turnover by the Hawks. And that's what you got to do, Dre. When you play football, right, when you get turnovers, it's it's not just getting a turnover. It's creating something after the turnover. Yeah. Scoring off of the turnover. You have to put points on the board after you get a turnover. When you put that pressure on the uh, offense, um, Peterson was, he was gaining some yards there until he fumbled it. Uh, I had him down for roughly 22, 26 yards on four carries. And uh, last one he fumbled. So he does show some speed. Um, do need to be aware of that. But, you know, like I said in the pregame, if, he, if they make themselves one-dimensional and don't try to do something to confuse this Hawk defense and, and all they got to do is key in on the run, it could be a long night for Peterson. Very long night. Because this Hawk defense likes to get after the football. Yeah, like I uh, said in the pregame, Hawk, Hawk defense has always been pretty good against the run. Cowan kind of dribbles it down the middle this time, and it's kind of fumbled by the up back and picked up. 
And the tackle is going to be made around the 20-yard line. By, it looks like Xavier Gagne. Xavier Gagne tackled Peterson after he picked it up. So it's going to be Bulldog, for, uh, Bulldog ball first and 10. Looks like about the 21 and a half yard line. Bulldogs come out in the eye formation. Power pitch to the right side to Peterson. And he gained about two yards on the play. Ryder Island on the tackle. I'm sure that's not the last time we'll call his name tonight. Now nah, he likes to shoot gaps, so he, he's going to be active. Eye formation, hand off to Peterson again. Finds a little bit of a crease, picks up. 12 yards and a Bulldog first down. Want to give a shout out to my daughter Gracie Nunez. She won the junior homecoming May. Very proud of her. Ooh, very well deserved. Bulldogs in the I formation again. Hand off to Peterson. And absolutely nowhere. nowhere. Tackle by Jeffrey Hopgood in the backfield. It's going to be minus a yard. Nice play by Hopgood coming in there, filling the gap. Don't bring them second and 11 for the Bulldogs. Parker under the center. Peterson in the I formation behind the fullback. Man in motion from right to left. Power pitch to the left. Looks to cut it back. Has a little bit of a lane. Picks up 10 yards. Going to bring up third and one for the Bulldogs. So they, you know, they getting them out there and then they letting them make uh, the decision on the cutback or to stay to the wide side of the field. Let and, him do his own thing. Well, you know, he has some pretty good speed, so you know that's the offense looks like it's designed pretty good for this young man. Yeah. Going to be third, third and one. See if this Hawk defense can come out stingy again. Come up stingy right here. Don't let him get get this first down. I can imagine uh, Van Cleve will punt. Oh, oh, they wind up giving him the first down. Looked like he was still a yard short from my, yeah. from my perspective. But it's going to be first and ten Bulldogs. Looks like at the 45-yard line. Hand off to Peterson. Following his fullback. Going to pick up. Eight, nine. Well, he, he kind of fell forward a little oh. bit. So about an eight-yard carry. Gonna bring up second and two. Tackle by Jasper Talley of the Hawks. Parker under center. Peterson behind the fullback. Parker looking to throw. Decides to keep it and picks up the first down himself after about a six yard carry. You kind of been wondering when he was going to drop back and look to pass. Six yard carry for Parker and a, and a Bulldog first down. Bringing it, bringing it to first and 10 at the Hawks 40 yard line. Got about two minutes and 21 seconds left in the first quarter. And off to Peterson. And looks like he gains about a yard. Up two yards, folks. Two yard carry for Peterson. Gonna bring up second and eight. Parker under the center. Peterson behind the fullback. Power pitch to the left side. Trying to string it out. Not bad by the Hawk defense right there. Tackle by number 27, Jeffrey Hopgood. Looks like he picked up about four yards on the carry. 
Going to bring up third and about five right here. Give it a three yard carry, actually. Third and five. Need the Hawk defense to come up stingy right here, Dre. Parker under center. Ran in motion left to right. Peterson. Power pitch to the right. And he's up ended. Nowhere. Tackled by Jeffrey Hopgood. Might have got a yard. Might have got a yard, folks. Bringing up another fourth down for Van Cleef. Do they really want to put themselves in a hole right here is the question. Well, we'll find out. Looks like they're lined up to go for it. Might try to draw them off sides right here, Dre. Yeah. You got to be cautious of that. That D-line has to watch the football. Power pitch to the right side. And right to Allen shoots the gap. And Peterson, nowhere. That's going to be a three-yard loss, folks. And a turnover on downs for your Hancock Hawks. And you got you said it, Dre. We're going to be calling that young man's name all night, right? Oh, right. yeah. All night and all year. Very disrupted when he gets in the backfield. And, you know, I think Ryder thrives on those type of plays. He's, he's challenging them. He's like, okay, you want to go for it on fourth down? Bet. Let's go. He lives for the moment. He shot that gap, and, and, and right as Peterson got the, the pitch, I mean, Ryder Island was in his face. Face mask to face mask. And I'm pretty sure that was Jeffrey Hopgood that came and cleaned up the tackle on it, too. So we got more in the shotgun. Looks like the Hawk formation right here, Dre. Haven't seen this this year. And off the Kramer on the right side. Now look at the hole. hole. Picks up about seven yards on Hawk first down. Don't bring up second and three. Gave him a six yard carry on that one. Second and four, Hancock. Ball. Ball at the 42-yard line. Looks like it's a timeout, Hancock. And we'll be right back after these messages. Pearl River Community College has been providing a quality education to the people of South Mississippi and beyond for the past 110 years. If you or a family member is an alumnus of this great institution, we invite you to support future PRCC students through the PRCC Foundation Scholarship Program. Honor or memorialize a loved one or identify your support for the college by creating a scholarship through the PRCC Foundation with your tax-deductible financial gift. Call Delana Harris with the PRCC Foundation Office at 601 601- 403-1191 and make a financial investment in a young person's future at Pearl River Community College. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. We got seven seconds left in the first quarter. Unusual timeout. It looked like uh, they was trying to get somebody on the field that was on the field. Uh, on the far sideline. Warren in the shotgun. Whistle. What we got here? Oh, the white cap didn't blow his whistle, said he was ready. Okay, so it's good. Play, no play, no play. Still going to be second in about four yards at the 42 yard line. More in the shotgun. Looks like two to the right, two receivers to the right, running back to his right. Kramer in motion. Hand off around the right side, gets a block. Does a little spin move, picks up the first down. Looks like he picks up five. Gets he needed yeah. four. He got five, they five for a Hawks first down, folks. Mason Kramer on a five-yard carry in a Hawks first down. So that's the end of the first quarter. Your Hancock Hawks lead the Van Cleve Bulldogs 13-0 going into the second quarter. We're going to flip fields. Looks like the ball is going to be at the 46-yard line, and we'll be right back after these messages. First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve their local community with two locations, Highway 11 North, just past Coast Electric, and on Highway 43 South, just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. You know they'll treat you right. Choose from any one of their car washes. 
Sign up for their monthly wash club starting as low as $20.99. Why do it yourself when you can let First Place Express Car Wash do it for you? Both locations offer a variety of wash packages to help fit your vehicle's individual needs. And each wash purchase includes a free vacuum. Try their ceramic coating to keep your vehicle's paint stay fresh and protected. First Place Express Car Wash provides your vehicle with that perfect shine every time. And they will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. It's Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. Breaking it to you live here. Started the, started the second quarter, 12 minutes on the clock. Hancock got the ball, first and 10. Morgan in the shotgun, hands off the Gulang, finds a hole, makes a little bit of a move, still on his feet. Nine-yard carry right there for Zachary Gulang. Going to bring up second and one. Nice run right there by Zach Gulang. Going to bring up second and short for the Hawks, cross midfield at the 45-yard line. Moran in the shotgun. Two receivers to his right, bunched up. One run, running back to his right. Kramer in motion. Fake the, fake it to it He's wrong. Untouched up the middle for a 40, 44 yard touchdown, folks. Nice play right there by Hancock on the call. What a block by Mason Kramer on the right side. And that's going to be a Hancock Hawks touchdown. With 11 minutes and 14 seconds left on the clock. Did you see the block by Mason? Yeah. Actually, Mason got blocked. <laughs> I thought it was the other way around. I'm watching the replay on YouTube, folks. And uh, Zach, they faked the hand off to uh, Mason, Mason Kramer and handed the switch off to Gulang. And... Uh, Gulag went untouched for 44 yard touchdown with 11 minutes and 14 seconds left on the clock. Your Hawks are now traveling right to left on your radio dial here at Brett Farr Field in Kill, Mississippi. Could it be back to back shutouts? I'm not going to call it just yet. Still too early. Still too, yeah, very early. Still have three quarters of football left, but you never know. <laughs> Snap is good, hold is good. There's a flag on the play. Got a flag on the play. Might be on Van Cleese, so does Lawler like to go for two right here to go up 21? I say you call you call your best two-point play. Yeah, you, I would. Y'all do practice those, right? Uh, we did last year. I don't know if they've drawn any up this year. If you did it last year, you're more than likely did it this year, Dre. You just don't, you, you got to practice those type of things. And yep, it all does just look on like, the field. Yep, they are coming out of the blue tent. As the field goal team comes off the field. Field goal unit off. Dylan Moran in the off. offensive one. <laughs> Ryder's like, am I staying on? <laughs> Ryder, you're not staying on offense, buddy. Come off. <laughs> We got Moran in the shotgun. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of some kind of uh, rub pick play on the right side. Running back to his right. Man in motion left to right. Out in the flat, you got Kramer. Wide open. And, oh. oh, he read it. That was a nice read right there by the defensive player. Moran should have threw that a little bit sooner, and Kramer was wide open in the flats. So instead of going up, instead of going up 21, Looks like it's going to be 19 to nothing Hancock early on. And we'll be right back after these messages. When you want the best seafood and steaks, there's only one place that consistently does it right. And that's Dempsey's Seafood and Steak in the Kill. Diane and her crew are consistently serving up a great dining experience with their signature Cajun flair. Dempsey's has raw and charred grilled oysters and the best steaks in the area. Dempsey's is now open Wednesday through Sunday for lunch, and dinner is available Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Treat yourself to Dempsey's Seafood and Steak on Kill DeLille Road in the Kill. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. Your Hawks lead early in the second quarter, 19-0. 
against the Van Cleve Bulldogs. Uh, last touchdown was a 44-yard touchdown by Zach Goulong, went in untouched. Uh, Hancock, uh, well, Van Cleve went off sides on the extra point, so Hancock elected to go for two, and Moran had Kramer wide open in the flats, but just held it a hair too long, and ball was incomplete. So now we got Finn, Finn Cowan with the ball on the tee, ready to boot it. Back deep for the Bulldogs is number one, Peterson. John Peterson. Cowan kind of squibs it down the middle. High bounce right there, Dan. But there's a hole right there for Peterson, and he's tackled right away at the 30-yard line. So, Van Cleve Bulldogs is going to take over first and 10 at their 30-yard line. Tackle by number one, Kobe Kern. Hancock looking good early, getting stops on defense, scoring on offense. Kind of looking how they did last week. Well, right now they're on a five-quarter scoreless streak for the year. Not hope, a bad way to start it, if hope, you ask me. I hope I didn't jinx them. <laughs> I don't, jinx don't run in my blood, buddy. Time out. Looks like by Van Cleve. And we'll be right back at these messages from First Southern Bank. First Southern Bank believes that banking should be personal and convenient. And that's exactly the type of service you will receive at First Southern Bank. Open your account at First Southern Bank at 1321 Highway 43 North in Picayune, and you can experience a true hometown banking experience. First Southern Bank is personal enough to handle all your banking needs and big enough to handle all your mortgage needs. Convenient locations personal friendly service and mortgage experts that's first southern bank true hometown banking at its best all right welcome back hancock hawk fans it's always fun when you're winning 19 nothing at home versus the van cleve bulldogs van cleve came out and called a timeout right away Let's see what they got going on here You got Hunter Parker underneath the center and John Peterson behind the fullback. I formation. Power pitch to the left. Peterson picks up about two yards. It's only gonna it's only gonna probably get worse for this man if they just keep running the same same plays. Wanna give a shout out to your cousins, Dre, who just sent me a text and said, Daddy, can you give me a shout out? I'm listening to you. <laughs> London and Brooklyn, Daddy loves you. And Andre does too. So it's gonna be second and eight for the Bulldogs. I form it well, bunch formation. Power pitch to number one again, Peterson. And he's trying hard for yards. Yeah. Looks like he picks up about another two, maybe three. We'll give him three on that one. He's gonna bring up third. Third and about four. Or third and three. Bounces it outside. And Looks like he's short of the first like down. he's going to be short by about a yard and a half maybe, Dre. Looked like that might have been Destin Coleman on the tackle, but he's coming off the field. Hopefully he's all right. Oh, now he's just throwing the third. coach's title. He said, Coach, I don't need it. So it's going to be another fourth and one. Fourth and it's going to be another fourth and one for the Bulldogs. And they're going for it. And this is where Ryder Island loves the challenge. Another bunch power formation for Van Cleve. Another little power pitch. This time Peterson finds a hole, huge hole. Finds a cutback, and he's tracked and hunted down by number three, Jasper Talley, it's at the 25-yard line. Nice carry right there by Peterson. Trying to see how many yards that was. 35 to the 25. 40-yard carry right there for Peterson. Going to bring up first and 10 for the Bulldogs. A little power bunch. Formation to get in the backfield. It's like he's got two fullbacks leading for him now, Andre. 
He's going to be tackled by number 23, Ryder Island, after about a four-yard carry. This kid has some, uh, he got some stamina because he's done touched the ball a lot already. Power pitch to the left side, finds a hole, tries to cut it back, picks up a bulldog first down and brings it to about the 11-yard line. Nice carry for Peterson. Another bunch formation. Same play. Looks like he brings it to about the seven-yard line. How much was that last carry? Uh, I think ten. This one's four. Four-yard carry. He's ragging them up, folks. Last week he had 31 carries for 355 yards and six touchdowns. So far he's been held in check. Hasn't hit the end zone yet. But it looks like he's approaching it. Gets the outside. And, and looks like he just got in. Yep, he's in. From uh, about the seven-yard line. So seven-yard touchdown for for John Peterson of the Van Cleef Bulldogs. And they get on the board. So the, the, the scoreless uh, quarter streak ended at five. Double D jinxed us. Yeah. So Van Cleef's going to line up for the extra point. Who's that kicking? 30? Gavin Baldwin. Oh, oh almost in almost. there. Destin Coleman almost got in there and blocked it. So your Hawks lead in the second quarter, 19-7 versus the Van Cleef Bulldogs. And we'll be right back after these messages. Andre Underwood. Bringing the game to you live via YouTube and WRJW on the portal. Go to the website. Check us out. Van Cleef looking to do a little onside kick, and it's going to be recovered by Hancock, which it's, it's – Jerry, even last year when I seen this, it was just mind-boggling to me why you would give a team great field position. Oh, no. Try to kick it deep. Yeah. You know – Make them work for it. Now you're giving Hancock the ball at home at the, what, 47-yard line? I wouldn't want to give this offense that type of field position. No, I mean. They could score in one play in a hurry if well, they wanted we, to. We've seen it a couple times. Destin Coleman with a 53-yard touchdown, and then, you know, Zachary Goulon with a 44-yard touchdown. So we got Moran in the shotgun. Goulon to his right, three receivers to the left. Moran looking to throw. Complete the 17 nil Acker. Gets a little bit of a block. Bounces it outside. Nine-yard reception for Acker. That's going to make Moray three for four tonight with a touchdown. Roughly uh, 31 yards passing. So they're going to bring up second and one. Hawks, uh, Hawks and uh, Moran in the shotgun. Two receivers to the left. Running back to his left. Hand off the Goulong up the middle. Makes a man miss. Picks up more than enough for the first down. Looks like he picks up four yards. Another hard run by Zachary Goulai. We give a shout out to Allison Nunez. I seen your message pop up on my phone, but uh, I'm focused. Uh, thank you for tuning in and watching, listening. Appreciate it. So it's going to be first and 10 Hancock at the 41. You got two receivers to the right. It looks like Neil Acker, wide right, Tanner Ladner in the slot. Running back to the right of Moran. Moran gets the snap. Looking to throw. Has Tanner Ladner on the wheel route. Oh, oh. just overthrows him a little bit. Oh, 
don't know if the receiver, I mean the uh, defender turned his head around, but nonetheless it was look good. Maybe could have put a little bit more air and used the sideline a little bit as your friend on that. You want to throw it towards that outside shoulder. Didn't miss by much. Finn Cowan checking in the game for Tanner Ladner. Good call right there. Good, good eye right there, Dre. So we got Finn Cowan in the slot. Acker, um, deep right. Moran in the shotgun. Kramer in motion, left to right. Penalty, uh, uh, play blown dead. Let's see what we got here, folks. It was second and ten Hancock. False Looks start like, on the Hawks. False start Hancock going to back him up five yards, Dre. And really, uh, that might be, is that the first penalty we've had for Hancock? Um, no, that would be the second, the false start on the kickoff. <laughs> good. Hey, good memory right there, Dre. So two penalties so far. <laughs> two penalties for a total of ten yards. For ten yards. So not really shooting ourselves in the foot with penalties just yet, but that was the first offensive penalty. So guys are staying focused, and I like it. Dylan Moran in the shotgun. Man in motion left to right. Hand off to Gulag. Gulag pumping his legs. He's still going. And he, he's just so hard. Once he gets low and squares those shoulders up, he's like a little bowling ball yeah. going down an alley, just wrecking the pins. And He gets to the second level, puts his head down. I mean, that was a 13-yard carry right there by Zachary Gulag, bringing up third and three. So third and three for Hancock. Haven't faced many third downs. Hawks leading 19 to 7 with six minutes and 20 seconds left. Moran in the shotgun. Hand it off to Gulag again. Puts his head down. Might have picked up two yards, maybe a yard short right here, bringing up fourth and one. You got to think that uh, Coach Lyler is definitely going to go for it here on fourth and short. Offense is still in the field, so looks like it. You know, you got a 12-point lead at and home. Here comes the heat but timeout. Here come, yep, good call, Dre. Here comes the heat timeout. With 5.57 left in the second quarter. And we're going to get our back right with more chiropractic. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. And here we are faced with a fourth and one. Dre, we got to pick up this first down. It's crucial. Very crucial. We got to put points on the board right here and keep that pressure on the Van Cleve offense because it looked like they gained a little bit of momentum last, last uh, offensive possession. Yeah. Moran in the shotgun. Two receivers to his left. Man in motion, right to left. Hand off to Kramer. Has a little bit of a hole. Put his head, puts his head down and picks up the first down. Looks like he picks up four yards and a hard first down. These Hawks running backs keep on getting the ball and just putting their head down. And getting what they have to get. You know, you only need about a yard and a half and he picks up four. And that's more than enough and that's all we need for a Hawks first down. Looks like Tanner Ladner's back in the game. All right, so it's going, all right, so it's going to be first and 10 Hancock at about the 28-yard line of, uh, of, of Van Cleve. Moran in the shotgun, three receivers to his right, running back to his right. Looking to throw. Has a man. Overthrows his intended receiver, Tanner Ladner. Is that maybe a communication error between the two? Looks like they got bunched up uh, between two defenders right there and it kind of threw Tanner off his right a little bit. We can watch the replay right here on the YouTube and and make a better judgment on that why they why they look to uh, get the play call from Lawler on the sideline. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. They went, it was a little congested right there. So Moran, Moran in the shotgun, two receivers to the right. Double handoff, Kramer. Gulag to Kramer. It looks like he fumbled the ball. Looks like Mason fumbled the ball, and it's going to be recovered by the Bulldogs at the 25-yard line. 
Couldn't tell if Kramer hit the ground or not. He picked up about five yards and fumbled it. Unfortunate for the Hawks who were driving and had the ball inside the, looked like it was inside the 30 at the time. Yes, it was like the 26. Oh, he got hit from behind, and the guy that hit him from behind punched the ball out, if you're watching the YouTube. Punched the ball out from behind, and Kramer, as, as he should be, is upset that he coughed the ball up for the Hawks. So it's going to bring up first and ten for the Bulldogs. Looks like they found a little something with the with the two fullback system back there, giving Peterson two guys. An extra to, blocker leading yeah, the way for him. Yeah, or like an extra guard. There's it's a gonna be a, in the play. Looks like it's gonna possibly be a false start on Van Cleve. Offsides on the Hawks. Oh, okay. Well, the way he ran over there it was like it was on Van Cleve's side, but offsides, neutral zone infraction. So, it's going to be first and five for the Van Cleve Bulldogs with Pucker under the center, Peterson behind two fullbacks, gets the handoff, it's bunched up, nowhere to run, and Dakey even made it lost a yard right there, folks. Yeah, it's going to bring up second and six. So Haycock clogging them holes up on some plays, and then it seems like some plays he's letting them, they letting them, they're letting Peterson slip through a little crease in the hole, and he's finding some room, like he did on that 40-yard uh, run. Power pitch to the left, and Peterson picks up seven yards. So he's going to bring it to about the. 38-yard line of, of Van Cleve. The other good thing about them running the ball is the clock is going to keep running. Power pitch, same play. Looks like a little bit of a hold right there. Didn't get called. Picks up about three yards. Looks like he spotted it where the helmet was and not where the ball was, but they're giving him actually four, four. yards. It's going to bring up second and six. Hancock's got to find something to stop this guy. Parker, power pitch to the left again. Just a bunch of hawks. He's just gaining two to three yards every carry. Every time. That time it was another three. Going to bring up third and about four and a half. Let's see if this hawks defense can pull up big right here. Got it at about the 44-yard line. Of, of, of Van Cleve. They're definitely not passing the ball, so you, the safety needs to come up. Again, nowhere to run. And he lost a yard right there. Gonna bring up fourth, fourth and five. Looks like we got an injury on the field by number 40, uh, 41, Xavier Gagne is down. Hope he's all right. All right, well, we're going to be right back after, after these messages. Hopefully, Xavier Gagne, number 41, is okay. This hunting season, hurry to Dixieland Home Farm and Garden for the gear to get you closer. All outdoorsmen know that success begins with preparation, knowing what to plant and when to plant. And Dixieland offers soil testing, plot mixes, and fertilizer. And they have a large variety of sporting goods, ammunition and targets, summit and millennium stands, scent control and ground blinds, and now hunting and fishing licenses. For great deals and friendly service, it's Dixieland Home Farm and Garden, Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dito Road. Open every day, 8 till 6. Find us on Facebook. All right, Hawk fans. It's fourth down. This is Aaron Underwood. This is Andre Underwood. In three minutes and 17 seconds left in the quarter, Van Cleve traveling left to right on your radio dial. It's going to bring up fourth down. Need a huge stop right here for the Hawks. Hand off. No, the quarterback keeps it on the fake. And he's going to pick up the first down. Fakes the handoff to the right side and pulls it. Great fake. Great play call right there. Ten-yard carry by Parker and a Van Cleve Bulldog first down in Hawk territory at the 45-yard line. You, you got to be aware of those. You, you know, yeah. 
you got to have backside containment. I don't know where Ryder Island was on that on that uh, play. Um, hold the whole defense like, being keeping yeah, Peterson the whole looks, entire game. Looks like he crashed in hard. You still got to have backside containment. Hand off to Peterson on the on the left side. Finds a hole and picks up picks up about eleven yards and a bulldog first down. Two minutes, 51 seconds left on the clock. Bulldogs going left to right. This game ended last year 20 to 10 at Van Cleve. Hancock leads now, right now, in Hancock this year, 19 to 7, right before the half. Parker under the center. Hands out to the left side on to Peterson. Picks up about another three yards. Say how tall he is, and we'll still gonna see how much he weighed, how tall he was. Cause he's just falling forward for like an extra yard every time. So we got Parker under the center, Peterson in the uh, eye formation. Power pitch to the right, looking to get outside. He's looking, he looked a little tired on that one, yeah. honestly, Andre. He he had no, actually no get up right there, and that was like a loss of two yards right there. Like. That play, he was met by number three, number 27, Jasper Kelly, and Jeffrey Hopgood combined for that tackle. And this is going to be up a third and long. So, again, you got to watch, uh, you know, what, he's thrown the ball. Has Once? He, has he thrown or, it? He's dropped back, but he, he yeah, pulled he it. Yeah, he didn't throw it. He didn't throw it. He pulled it. So, he actually has no pass attempts. But that last play they did where they faked it and uh, he kept it was a pretty good design. Man in motion, left to right. Quarterback under the center. Power pitch to the right. Looking to do a, a halfback pass. And this is in the air a little bit too long. And, and it's going to be broke up by number 11, Tina Lardner. That was number seven on the pass. Kyle Capers. Kyle Capers. Sophomore. No, freshman. Freshman comes in at halfback, and they try to uh, halfback, halfback pass. pass. And it goes incomplete. Had a look, it was in the air too long. Yeah. Uh, surprised Tanner Lanner didn't uh, intercept that. So it's going to be fourth and nine. Fourth and nine folks at the Hancock 31 and a half yard line. So we need to stop right here. We need to get the ball back and we need to score right before the half. But before all that can happen, we got a timeout with a minute and 20 seconds left on the clock. And we'll be right back after these messages. As as I find the commercial. Physical therapy has evolved into specialized care for patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Dr. Jamison Dodd with Dodd Therapy Center in Picayune is LSVT Big certified for treatment of Parkinson's disease. LSVT Big trains people with Parkinson's to use their body more normally and improves movements for any activity, whether small motor tasks like buttoning a shirt or large motor tasks like getting up from a sofa or chair or maintaining balance while walking. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call today at 769-242-2636 or stop by at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bring it to you live via YouTube on Hancock County School District uh, YouTube page and on WRJW 1320, or you can go on the WRJW website and click the portal. Bulldogs faced with a fourth and nine. Shotgun formation, quarterback rolling right, looking to throw backside on the screen, and he's not going to get the first down. He's going to be short. He's going to be stopped about two and a half yards short, and Hancock's going to take over at the 26-yard line. With the good, minute and 10 left. It was a good play call, but uh, good uh, defense for the Hawks to stay, you know, in their, in their assignments. Yeah. So it's going to be first and 10 Hancock, starting from the 31-and-a-half-yard line. See if Moran and the Hawks can go down the field and score with a minute and 10 seconds left on the clock. So we got Moran in the shotgun. Destin Coleman to his right. Two receivers to his right. Man in motion, left to right. Hand off to Coleman. Counter. Picks up about picks up about three. 
maybe two. Maybe four yards. Oh, they say four yards, so we'll give them four. Gonna bring up second and six for the Hawks. Second 54 six. seconds left on the clock. Uh -huh. You know, Jerry, I'd like to see, uh, you know, roll right, throw back left. Yeah. It's happened a few times for the Hawks in the past where you get everybody rolling right and throw back left with a man wide open and, and score. Maybe it'd be that connection again, more in the Acker. I remember the football player oh, last year. What was his name? He uh, used to call the, he, the football player the running back. Pitch to the left. Oh, nice crack block right there. And Gulong still on his feet. Nice block. And that's going to be a 21-yard 20, carry by Zach Gulong. It's going to be first and 10 Hancock with 28 seconds left on the clock. That was a nice block by the uh, offensive lineman right there. Pulled out there and grabbed the corner, uh, knocked the cornerback. Nice block. Going to be first and 10 Hancock at the 46 yard line, going right to left. I don't know how many timeouts Hancock has left. Probably should be keeping up with that. Looks like Lyle is trying to get. Get a nice play called up right here. Warren's currently three for six on the night. 31 yards passing. Warren in the shotgun, two receivers to the left. Wing back to the left, running back to his right. Looking to pass, pump fakes, has to in the oh. line there and overthrows him. Nice play call right there, but just overthrew him a little bit too much. I would have liked to see that play called on the other side of the field. You have more room to work with the wide side of the field. Not a bad play call by any means. Just no, not at all. Would have liked to see it where, where you have more more uh, playing field to work with and give you receiver more of a chance than having to fight the sideline right there. So Moran in the shotgun. Receiver to the right, receiver to the left. Wing back right, running back to the left. Throws a slant to Neil Acker across the middle. Neil puts his head down, picks up 13 yards. And a Hawks first down. Clock's going to stop, bringing it to Bulldog territory. And Moran's going to spike it. It's going to be second and 10 for the Hawks at the 41-yard line, 41-and-a-half-yard line. That was a 13-yard completion from Moran to... Neil Acker. Looking over to the sideline. Makes you wonder if maybe they're even going to try to just get a, get enough in, Phil, uh, in Cowan. Uh, Cowan range? Yeah, Cowan range. He does have a leg. Pretty good leg. So we got Moran in the shotgun. Receiver to his right. Receiver to the left. Delay a game on the Hawks. Delay a game on the Hawks. That's not good. So you, now you got you got five more yards. Not you gotta, yeah. You got to get five more yards away from the end zone. Going to bring up second and 15 from the 47 of Van Cleef. Destin Coleman is going to check in. Gulon is going to check out. Five seconds again. Quick pitch to Dustin Coleman. Has a little bit of run. Needs to get out of bounds, and he does. Picks up 16. And a Hawks first down. The main part about that is getting out of bounds with 11 seconds left on the clock. He's pretty shifty. Maybe you want to see uh, Dustin Coleman on a wheel route. That could be nice. Hang it up there. Let him go get it. Yeah, let him use his speed.
Eight seconds left on the play clock. Hancock still. Hits the Coleman. And that's going to run out the clock, folks. Oh, no. Two seconds left. And Neil, Neil Lowler calls a timeout with fourth and one left on the clock. After Coleman. Coleman picked up about two yards, maybe three. So I guess you're just going to say, hey, Dylan Moran, just, just throw it up. Throw it. Throw it out there and see if you can get uh, six foot three Neil Acker to come down with the ball. Got two seconds left on the clock, folks. Fourth down. See what Hancock does, leading 19-7. You'd see imagine if, it's going to the end zone. Yeah, see if they just let like Dylan use his arm and throw it. Throw it to one of his tall receivers. Moran. Look for Acker. Acker. And, and it was intercepted in the end zone. First interception on the year for Dylan Moran. Nonetheless, your Hawks are going to go into the half leading against the Van Cleef Bulldogs at home, 19-7. to And we'll be right back after these messages. Hey neighbors, you can now follow Pawpaw's Campers on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, or Pawpaw's Campers website. That's rvbestprice.com. Pawpaw's Campers will be posting new inventory, recent trade-ins, as well as accessories and parts specials. You can also call Pawpaw's Campers toll-free, 800-728-2267. That's 800-728-CAMP to talk to one of their professional salespeople. Make that short drive to the Yoon. That's picky you. You'll be glad you did. Pawpaw's Campers, having fun, selling fun. Make the quick short drive to pick a Yoon for a downright down home feel. Great service, great price, now isn't that nice? You're gonna love the way we deal. Pawpaw's Campers, city and pick a Yoon. Yeah, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You're gonna love the way we deal. Dr. Hermaine Almonte, Medical Trauma Director, Highland Community Hospital. Trauma is one of the leading causes of death and disability, especially in the younger population in the United States. It is of critical importance to have access to an excellent hospital ready for your needs. Here at Highland, we have the most qualified staff and the newest technology. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. Please call 601-358-9400 or visit highlandch.com. Craving a breakfast toaster or French toast sticks? Make it a meal and step up your breakfast with Tots and a cold beverage. Sonic Drive-In has the perfect portable breakfast, and it's the perfect way to start your day. And at Sonic Drive-In in Picayune, you can stop by any time because breakfast is served all day. Sonic Drive-In of Picayune on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North. Start your day Sonic style with happy eating at its best. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In of Picayune. Destination delicious. Ladies and gentlemen, Van Cleef High School is proud to present the award winning. When your roommate borrows your car every day, it might be a blind spot. And if something bad happens to your expensive collection of anything, it could be a blind spot. Even having people over to jump around on your trampoline. Yep, it also might be a blind spot. 
Blind spots are all the surprising things that might need more coverage that you weren't aware of. Good thing all state agents can help you find these blind spots while watching out for your wallet. Contact Jason Pigan at the Pigan Agency in Pearl River County today. Call 601 798 7005. You're in good hands with all state and the Pigan Agency. Are you or someone you know looking to take your education to the next level? Pearl River Community College can help. Whether you're looking for a true college experience or you want to jumpstart your career, Pearl River has you covered. PRCC strives to remain affordable and accessible to help you regardless of where you are on life's journey. With face-to-face, -face, hybrid, and online courses, Pearl River meets you where you are. Visit prcc.edu slash admissions or call 601-403-1000 to rise with the river. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This is Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. And this is the Halftime Report. Your Hawks are leading 19-7 versus the Van Cleave Bulldogs at home. And we got Dylan Moran, 4-9 for 44 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Um, we got Mason Kramer, five carries, 35 yards, one fumble. Um, Zachary Gulong over the century mark, Dre, 10 carries, 131 yards, and a touchdown. And then Destin Coleman approaching the century mark with four carries, 76 yards, and a touchdown. So your Hawks lead 19-7, had a block extra point and a, a two-point conversion fail. So that's how we got 19. And uh, the seven for Van Cleve was a touchdown, seven-yard touchdown by John Peterson of the Bulldogs, who's been uh, having a heck of a night. Uh, as soon as we get back with the next set of commercials, I'll have the stats for that young man because uh, he's probably ran about over 30 times already. So I'll give me a little bit of time to figure out where he's at, and we'll be right back after these messages. First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve their local community with two locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and on Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. You know they'll treat you right. Choose from any one of their car washes. Sign up for their monthly wash club starting as low as $20.99. Why do it yourself when you can let First Place Express Car Wash do it for you? Both locations offer a variety of wash packages to help fit your vehicle's individual needs. And each wash purchase includes a free vacuum. Try their ceramic coating to keep your vehicle's paint stay fresh and protected. First Place Express Car Wash provides your vehicle with that perfect shine every time. And they will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. Community College has been providing a quality education to the people of South Mississippi and beyond for the past 110 years. If you or a family member is an alumnus of this great institution, we invite you to support future PRCC students through the PRCC Foundation Scholarship Program. Honor or memorialize a loved one or identify your support for the college by creating a scholarship through the PRCC Foundation with your tax-deductible financial gift. Call Delana Harris with the PRCC Foundation Office at 601-403 1191 and make a financial investment in a young person's future at Pearl River Community College. When you want the best seafood and steaks, there's only one place that consistently does it right, and that's Dempsey's Seafood and Steak in the Kill. Diane and her crew are consistently serving up a great dining experience with their signature Cajun flair. Dempsey's has raw and charred grilled oysters and the best steaks in the area. Dempsey's is now open Wednesday through Sunday for lunch, and dinner is available Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Treat yourself to Dempsey's Seafood and Steak on Kill the Little Road in the Kill. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. So, John Peterson on the night so far for the Van Cleve Bulldogs has carried the ball in the first half 30 times for 165 yards, one touchdown and one fumble, and then Parker... Hunter Parker, the quarterback, has carried it twice for 16 yards, giving them 183 yards on the night on 32 uh, carries. Uh, 
had one completion for a screen route. It was like four or five yards. Came up short for the for the first down for the Bulldogs. So so far so far tonight, Hancock has even though the guy has 30 carries, 165 yards. Uh, Hancock has kept him in check for the most part. I mean, I guess if you want to consider, he had 355 yards rushing on 30 carries last week, or 31 carries. So he's already only just one carry less than what he had last week, um, but also um, 200 yards less as well. So hopefully we keep that young man in check and uh, continue to force them with uh, – medium third down and fourth downs to where we can uh, get those four, four down stops and turn over on downs and uh, take over. Hancock offense looked a, li a little shaky in the last possession or even two possessions uh, with the fumble by Mason Kramer and then, you know, interception. You can't really say that was Moran's fault. He was yeah. trying to make something happen. But More of a Hail Mary ball. Yeah. Um, so, not gonna really say that was like a, a bad, you know, a bad decision. He was doing what he was told, throw it up, try to make something happen, and uh, you know, with that being said, your Hancock Hawks lead 19 to seven um, at the half versus the Van Cleve Bulldogs here and kill Mississippi at Brett Favre Field. Um, we'll be right back after these messages. First Southern Bank believes that banking should be personal and convenient, and that's exactly the type of service you will receive at First Southern Bank. Open your account at First Southern Bank at 1321 Highway 43 North in Picayune, and you can experience a true hometown banking experience. First Southern Bank is personal enough to handle all your banking needs and big enough to handle all your mortgage needs. Convenient locations, personal friendly service, and mortgage experts. That's First Southern Bank, true hometown banking at its best. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight for the last time in entertainment, we are proud to present the all-superior pride of Bangkok, the Bangkok High School Marching Band. This year, the book of the Bangkok High School Marching Band. Back pains and injuries, Dr. Moore understands. No more pain, no more hurting. She just uses her hands. She got the number one clinic that I recommend. She has a lovely crew too, and they'll fix you right up. So call Dr. Moore when that pain gets rough. Cause we got your back, hey, we got your back. We got your back, hey, we got your back. We got your back, hey, we got your back. More chiropractic clinic, located at 6682 Highway 11 North. Suite 103, Cary, Mississippi, 39426. We got your back. Hey. This hunting season, hurry to Dixieland Home Farm and Garden for the gear to get you closer. All outdoors can know that success begins with preparation, knowing what to plant and when to plant. And Dixieland offers soil testing, plot mixes, and fertilizer. And they have a large variety of sporting goods, ammunition and targets, summit and millennium stands, scent control and ground blinds, and now hunting and fishing licenses. For great deals and friendly service, it's Dixieland Home Farm and Garden, Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dito Road. Open every day, 8 till 6. Find us on Facebook. Hey friends, Paw Paws Campers in Picayune is slashing prices on new fifth wheels. Check out this new 2022 Rockwood Ultralight 2899KS fifth wheel with a rear kitchen floor plan, large walk-in pantry, and a kitchen island. MSRP 83592 reduced to only 67841 You can go to RVBestPrice.com, that's RVBestPrice.com, and see multiple pictures of this unit. Make that short drive to the Yoon, that's Picky Yoon, home of the 2021 Football 5A State Champions. Come and see us. Make the quick short drive to Pick a Yoon for a downright down home feel. Great service, great price, now in the nice. You're gonna love the way we deal. Pop Pops, Camper City, and Pick a Yoon. Yeah, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You're gonna love the way we deal. That's 
Physical therapy has evolved into specialized care for patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Dr. Jamison Dodd with Dodd Therapy Center in Picayune is LSVT Big certified for treatment of Parkinson's disease. LSVT Big trains people with Parkinson's to use their body more normally and improves movements for any activity, whether small motor tasks like buttoning a shirt or large motor tasks like getting up from a sofa or chair or maintaining balance while walking. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call today at 769-242-2636 or stop by at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. Dr. Cynthia Jean-Pierre for the Highland Center for Women's Health. It's really important to have a strong OB department in this community because you want them to feel safe where they can talk to you about anything medically, anything going on at home that can affect how we take care of them. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. Please call 601-358-9400 or visit highlandch.com. Welcome back, Hawk fans. As usual, I'll let you guys listen to the band a little bit. And here's your Hawk, Hawk Hancock High School marching band. Craving a breakfast toaster or French toast sticks? Make it a meal and step up your breakfast with Tots and a cold beverage. Sonic Drive-In has the perfect portable breakfast, and it's the perfect way to start your day. And at Sonic Drive-In in Picayune, you can stop by any time because breakfast is served all day. Sonic Drive-In of Picayune on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North. Start your day Sonic style with happy eating at its best. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In of Picayune. Destination delicious. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. One more stat we want to throw out there is the receiving stat for Neil Acker, who's had all four uh, receptions for Dylan Moran, four catches, 44 yards, and one touchdown. Didn't want to leave that kid off the halftime report. So your Hawks lead 19-7 to at home against Van Cleef. Looks like they got about four minutes left until the uh, second half kickoff. Um, looks like Hancock was having trouble, Jerry, towards the end as far as uh, also with time management. It looked, yeah. like, looked like Dylan was uh, having a little trouble. Uh, either I don't know if he was getting the play or just we weren't really. Or the play wasn't getting in quick enough. Yeah, we wasn't really paying attention to the play clock because there was a couple times there where uh, we snapped the ball with like one second left on the clock and it felt rushed. Yeah. Know? So the play really didn't develop like we needed. Um, hopefully we get those things mixed out, um, you know, fixed and kink, the kinks uh, taken out. The only other negative really uh, for the first half was uh, the two penalties and 
last year, those penalties hurt us. Well, not really hurt us, but it was what was the only negative thing in the uh, non-district games were the amount of penalties we had. And so far, we've only had two. The one on the kickoff and the uh, false start on offense. So, two penalties for 10 yards, not really hurting us. I can remember last year we having like seven for 80 and nine for 90 or, you know, some crazy amount of numbers and it just kept feeling like it was digging us in a, a hole when we didn't need any holes to be dug. Yeah, so, those penalties, they'll, they'll kill you if you rack them up. They could kill your momentum if you have it. Absolutely. You can't. You don't want anything to kill your momentum. Um, Zach Gulong has been a workhorse in the first half. And like I mentioned, 10 carries for 131 yards, and he had that 44-yard touchdown that, where he went untouched. Um, I don't know what his most yards are rushing in a, in a varsity game, but I, I would go ahead and probably say this, this is the most. This is it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I uh, think Hancock has, uh, they've established themselves, they've established who their bell cow is going to be for the year. Well, you know, when you go, you go from, uh, you go from Gulong and then you throw in a little Mason Kramer and uh, then, you know, Destin, Destin Coleman. And so, you know, a little lightning and thunder action. Yeah. But usually, you know, the thunder comes after the lightning. And in our case, it seems like we throw the lightning at you after the thunder. <laughs> Gulong pounds it and pounds it and gets that defense worn out a little bit. And then you switch it up with a little, with a little uh, Destin Coleman or or Mason uh, Kramer around the end, and and it's both just, of those guys have enough speed to get around the edge. Absolutely, but you know what it also kind of reminds you of is uh, you see the fastball, fastball, fastball in baseball, and then they and hit you with the that ball. Yeah, they hit you with that off speed, and it's it's like whoa, you know that's what wasn't it's kinda, expecting that right, and and not that the teams aren't expecting it, but with so much going on in, in that Hancock backfield when they. Uh, you know, doing those fakes and handing it off one way, you know, faking it one way, handing it off the other, or just straight handing it off and running the power over the right side or the left side um, and just being consistent with it. Uh, I think Gulag only had one carry for zero yards where he got stopped at the line of scrimmage. Other than that, I don't think Hancock had a single carry for uh, no game. That was the only one. It was his, uh, it was Gulag's third carry of the night where he got stopped at the uh, – line of scrimmage. Um, the only other negative run we had was uh, when uh, Mason got hit from behind and the ball, you know, popped out. So if we eliminate uh, those mistakes um, as far as, you know, not holding on to the ball and, and converting um, on every drive and getting some points, uh, Hancock should be able to hold on to the win. Uh, again, I said should be able to. Um, they lead by 12 right now uh, at half. 19 to 7 against the Van, Key, Van Cleve Bulldogs here at Brett Favre Field in Kill, Mississippi. We'll be right back. We got one more uh, commercial to get to, and then we'll be right back. Welcome to a place where everyone deserves to be better protected, where technology has your back, where you can have better protection and keep more money in your pocket. Where you can have protection for your car, your home, your phone, and even your digital identity. You're in good hands with Allstate. Contact Jason Pigan at the Pigan Agency in Pearl River County today. Call 601-798-7005. You're in good hands with Allstate and the Pigan Agency. Allstate and affiliates offer products and services subject to availability, terms, and conditions. All right, Hancock Hawk fans. Second half action. About ready to get started. Your Hawks in the end zone. Getting loose. Getting those legs warm up. One thing I didn't, uh, I have noticed uh, for the Nigeria is haven't really seen any heat cramps. No. So maybe uh, ate ate some extra bananas today, or you know, prehydrated yesterday. I know, uh, I know, uh, during uh, the summer and during spring training, uh, when I would come watch, um, Coach Lala was a stickler for you know hydrating after workouts. Yeah, he was very big on. Us hydrating. You couldn't leave until you, uh, you drank like eight cups of Gatorade. Oh, uh, yeah. That's normally normally on Thursdays after practice, after the walkthrough, hydration. And then before the game, too, you also have to do it if you're a Friday night guy. And how'd that work? How'd that work? Uh, who had, so you had the initial cup or the trainer? The, the, yeah, the, we had, 
we'd get a cup and walk around, and as we'd finish the cup, we'd give it to the trainer, and they'd fill it back up, and they'd keep track of our cups. <laughs> not, pretty cool idea there to make sure nobody's, you know, getting away with not getting hydrated. But it seems like it's worked so far tonight. I haven't really seen any uh, cramps. Uh, we did see Xavier Gagne get banged up on one play. Looked like it could have been a stinger. Wasn't 100% sure no. on that, but we'll keep an eye on Xavier, see if he gets back in the game. Uh, Hancock's going to be kicking off to the Bulldogs to start the, uh, the second half, leading 19-7. to And we got to put this young man in check, Drake. 30 carries for 165 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, you definitely have to put him in check somehow, one way or another. Because eventually, you know, him getting the ball almost every play could wind up tying this defense out. And then he's going to bust a long one, maybe. Well, you know what? Could wear the defense out. But on his last couple carries, it, it looked like he was getting worn out himself. So, you know, he's one less carry than he had last last week. He's had 30 carries. He had 31 last week. Although, he did have more yards. So, you know, maybe it, it's kind of leveling off or evening out. Maybe he's not, you know, as winded because of, he hasn't ran for as many yards. But we'll see in the second half as uh, Finn Cowan finally kicks it deep. Receives it at about the two or three yard line as Peterson finds a hole. And nice return by John Peterson bringing it to the Van Cleve 37 yard line. And that's where the Bulldogs is going to start their uh, opening drive of the second half, first and 10. Nice return. 34-yard return for John Peterson. I guess add that to his uh, overall total of yards, too. It's going to be first and 10 at the 38. So a 35-yard return for John Peterson. Bulldogs come out in the same offense. Eye formation, Peterson behind the fullback. Handoff around the right side. And, and he goes nowhere. And his first carry of the second half is going to be a one-yard loss. Tackle by John. Uh, Jeffrey Hopgood. Jeffrey Hopgood. I don't know why I wanted to say John, but Jeffrey Hopgood on the tackle number 27. So going to bring up second and 11 for the Bulldogs. Looks like Van Cleve's in the shotgun. Peterson to the right of the quarterback. Three receivers to the left. Looks like an option. Quarterback tries a quarterback draw and then pitches it. And Peterson's only going to pick up two, three. Maybe two and a half. We'll give him two yards on the carry. Third and seven uh, for Van Cleve Bulldogs right here. Like a long seven, actually. Shotgun formation, two receivers to the right, two to the left. Running back to his right, looking to throw. Pulls it down. And might have been a yard short of the first. Might be fourth and one right here. We'll see what the what the line judge marks it. It looks like he's marking it short. It looks like he did mark it a yard a yard short. It's fourth and one. So would it be in second? What was that? Uh, I mean, third and seven. A long seven. seven. He picked up six and brings up fourth and one. So, first fourth down right here for the Hawks defense. See if we can shoot the gap and make a play right here. Double fullbacks. Handoff. Man in the backfield. By Jeffrey Hopgood. By Jeffrey Hopgood. Number 27 shot the gap and tackled him for about a two and a half, three yard loss, folks. Great defensive play by the Hawks to start off the second half and giving them great field possession in Bulldog territory. That's the that's the exact way you would have to start a second half off when you're so, on defense first. That was a three minus three yards, so three carries for Peterson and negative one yards to start the second half. Moran in the shotgun. 
Hands it off. Gulaw. Looking for yards. Still on his feet. Hard to bring down. Picks up a yard. Looks like they give him a, a yard on the play. Gonna bring up second and nine. So Moran in the shotgun. Looks like uh, Gulon coming out. Destin Coleman coming in. Coleman to the left of Moran. Receiver to the left. Three to the right. Looking to go up top to Neil Acker. And incomplete. Intended for Neil Acker. Acker looking for a flag. And he's not going to get one. Looked like he had him there for a second, folks. Put it where only he could he could get it. Outside, use the sideline as your friend. Going to bring up third and nine. Got to pick up the first down right here after causing a turnover on downs. A little confusion. Acker came off. Man in motion. Hand off the Kramer around the right side. And he's going to be stopped right away. Probably got probably got back to the line of scrimmage. Going to bring up fourth down. And it looks like Hancock's going to elect to probably punt it right here. Yeah. Play the field possession game right here. So after excellent show of defense by the Hawks, they come in and stutter on the offensive side of the ball. It looks like it's kind of where it was towards the end of the second half. They need to find that groove of what they were doing early in the first quarter and get back to it. Looks like it's number number one. Is that number one back to punt? Kobe Kern? Oh, no, no that's, two. that's Finn. That's two. Finn Cowan, the kicker. I know it was... Uh, Kobe, Kobe is the long snapper. Okay. Uh, I, I, I knew I saw him go out there. I was confused. And then the way uh, Finn was standing, I couldn't tell if that was a one or a two. But I know uh, in the past, Christian and Jim Marita had uh, Ty Dito punting. So yeah. with Ty being out, I guess they're letting Finn... Take over the punting duties. And not a bad punt by Finn Cowan. Looks like it's going to get a hunk bounce, and it's going to be stopped uh, uh, down at the 13-yard line. 13-yard line, 14-yard line for the Bulldog, uh, for the Bulldogs. So, and we starting out with some pretty bad field position right here. Roughing the kicker on Van Cleave. Oh. And on the replay, you can see it on YouTube right there. So it's going to be a, that, that is probably going to be an automatic first down, maybe. It should be. Didn't even notice the flag. I was pulling out the stat sheet to start tracking uh, Peterson's carries and yards. <laughs> See what they're doing right here. Probably So Hancock offense comes back on the field, and it's going to be fourth and one. 
looks how you don't get an automatic first down. So if Hancock don't take the delayed game to back up for some more putty, well, I mean, you, you just don't know if there's still a, a, a penalty. Timeout by Van Cleave. Timeout Van Cleave, and with that, we will go to a commercial. As soon as I find the commercial sheet, there it is. And we'll be right back after these messages. First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve their local community with two locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and on Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. You know they'll treat you right. Choose from any one of their car washes. Sign up for their monthly wash club starting as low as $20.99. Why do it yourself when you can let First Place Express Car Wash do it for you? Both locations offer a variety of wash packages to help fit your vehicle's individual needs. And each wash purchase includes a free vacuum. Try their ceramic coating to keep your vehicle's paint stay fresh and protected. First Place Express Car Wash provides your vehicle with that perfect shine every time. And they will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. After that confusion, there was a penalty that was called and gave the Hancock Hawks a first down at the 36-yard line of Van Cleve. Moran attempted a pass on the first down, and it was incomplete. So it's going to bring up second and 10. Moran has not been having a good night tonight. Hopefully he gets it together. Three receivers to the left. Hand off to Coleman. Ran the left side. Finds a hole. Cuts it back. And going to bring it to about the 26-yard line. And that's going to be a nine-yard carry for Destin Coleman. Bringing up third and one. Or third and basically inches. Inches. I bring out a measurement. Yeah, here comes the chain crew in the field here for the comes measurement. The, here comes the chain crew and, and when the chain crew comes out, folks, that, that means you deserve a commercial from First Southern Bank. First Southern Bank believes that banking should be personal and convenient, and that's exactly the type of service you will receive at First Southern Bank. Open your account at First Southern Bank at 1321 Highway 43 North in Picayune, and you can experience a true hometown banking experience. First Southern Bank is personal enough to handle all your banking needs, and big enough to handle all your mortgage needs. Convenient locations, personal friendly service, and mortgage experts. That's First Southern Bank, true hometown banking at its best. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. Brought out the chains. Looks like it's going to be third in an inch. Third in an inch. See if Hancock can pick it up. Let's see, give the Gulong right here and just let him put his head down. And that's what the Hawks do. They try to, Bulldogs try to come down and uh, from the, like a little cornerback, cornerback blitz to get to Gulong, but. He, he picks up two yards and a Hancock Hawks first down. Didn't he have one for you? One yard earlier? I can't remember. All right, so we got Hancock first and ten. Moran in the shotgun. Double handoff, Gulag to Kramer. Kramer tries to cut it inside. Picks up about a yard. Gonna be second. Third. Nah, it should be second, right? Third. Yeah, there we go. Second now. That was first down. So it's gonna be second and nine. 
See if the Hawks can get on get in the end zone right here. Maybe try something to get Morian going. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Man in motion left to right. Looking to throw, has Gulag in the flats, throws it low. And Moran upset with himself, wish he could have that one back because Gulong was Had wide a, open in the flats. Wide open and a whole bunch of green in front of him. That's Moran's eighth incompletion on the night. Just, just, not, not, night. just not having a, a good statistical night right now. Is leading the Hawks to a 19-7 lead right now with six minutes and 59 seconds left in the third quarter. Bringing up third and nine, you just hate to miss opportunities like that. He, and that kid knowing him, he's going. That's going to eat him up. And off to Kramer on the right side, trips, slips, and falls. Picks up about a yard. Going to bring up fourth and nine and. You got to keep the uh, offense on the field right here, but you got to find something different. You, you got to find one of those plays that you did early in the first quarter. And the tight end had a big, big week uh, last week. Let's see if we can find him. Why not? Had like, what, 80 yards? 80 season? yards on like two, three catches. So we're going to have a timeout, folks. And we'll be right back after these messages. When you wake up with an aching back or sore neck, Dr. Debbie Moore with Moore Chiropractic Clinic suggests you consider making simple changes in your sleeping position to alleviate unnecessary strain on your body. According to the American Chiropractic Association and Dr. Debbie Moore, it's best to sleep on your back or side because laying on your back or side allows your head, neck, and spine to relax into their natural alignment. This will help you wake up pain-free and feeling rejuvenated. More Chiropractic Clinic. We've got your back. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bring it to you live here in Kill, Mississippi at Brett Favre Field with your Hancock Hawks lead 19-7. Bringing up fourth and long, fourth and nine. Hancock has the ball at the 20, might as well say about the 24-yard line. Moran in the shotgun. Two receivers to his left, running back to his left. Rolling left. Looking to throw. Has a man wide open, and he drops it. you got to be kidding me. You couldn't have been any more wide open. It couldn't have been an easier catch. And Neil Acker drops. That's a very rare drop a 24, from Neil Acker. A 24-yard touchdown. And... That's one you got to make for your quarterback who's been struggling here towards the, the latter part of the second quarter and early on in the, in the third quarter. You have to make that catch to give him his confidence back. That would have been a 24-yard touchdown, no doubt about it. And I, I, I don't understand how you just drop the ball like that. Nonetheless, going to bring up first down for the Van Cleve Bulldogs starting at the 20. 24-yard line. Shotgun formation. Running back to his right. Rolling right. Looking to throw. Tries to throw it deep and overthrows the intended receiver number nine. David Harris, Jr., David Harris Jr. on the, uh, the intended receiver. It wasn't really open. I think they were just trying something different. Yeah. Maybe giving Peterson a rest. I don't know. It's on 33 carries on the night for 164 yards. Van Cleve again coming out second and long, second and 10 in the shotgun. Parker in the shotgun, Peterson to his right, looking to throw. Throws it up, has a man open, and tackled after about a 12-yard reception by 
Christophe Gagne on the tackle. He threw that ball pretty far for it to be a 12-yard completion. Threw it all the way across the field. You can't give up your ground. You got even though you're on the wide side of the field. I mean, that ball looked like it hung in there. I thought it was gonna be picked off. Yeah, it looked like it was sailing. Shotgun right again. Throws the swing route to Peterson. And he's gonna be stopped in the backfield by Coleman. And 16 Casey Wheat. Looks, looks like a two-yard loss. Looks like there's a flag on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct versus Hancock number one, Kobe Kern. Looked like they were both tangled up. Kobe Kerr was the one that got caught. A little pushing, a little extracurricular activities after the play. Going to bring up first and 10 for the Bulldogs at the 50-yard line. And they still in this shotgun formation. Rolls right. Looking to throw the seam down the middle of the field. Number 12 wide open. And... Going to be completed and caught. Brought down all the way inside the five. You can't leave those plays open. I know you got a, a steady dose of Peterson the whole first half, but you still got to stay in your, your, your lanes and your zones in the, in, in the pass protection game. And I kind of said that earlier before the game that they were probably going to do some uh some It was only a matter of time before they... Uh, Started Start. dropping back and throwing the ball. So nice, nice pass from uh, number two Hunter Parker to number twelve Leighton Eater. And the heat. And timeout. that's going to lead to a heat timeout. Well, your Hawks lead nineteen to seven late in the third quarter with five minutes and forty nine seconds left, and we'll be right back after these messages from Dodd Therapy. Physical therapy has evolved into specialized care for patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Dr. Jamison Dodd with Dodd Therapy Center in Picayune is LSVT Big certified for treatment of Parkinson's disease. LSVT Big trains people with Parkinson's to use their body more normally and improves movements for any activity, whether small motor tasks like buttoning a shirt or large motor tasks like getting up from a sofa or chair or maintaining balance while walking. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call today at 769-242-2636 or stop by at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. Big play right there by the Van Cleve Bulldogs on a long pass play from Parker to Eater. Bringing it inside the five. Now they're in the power set again with Peterson behind two fullbacks. And got another flag. Offsides on the Hawks. Gonna be defensive encroachment offsides on Hancock. Bring them even closer. It's gonna be half the distance to the goal. So now they got it at about the three yard line. First and goal at the three. Could use a huge turnover right here. Hand off to Peterson. Up the middle and he's gonna score. Touchdown, John Peterson for the Van Cleve Bulldogs on a three-yard touchdown. That's going to bring the score to 19-13, pinning the extra point. He had six touchdowns last week, so he's very accustomed to getting into the end zone. He's only got there twice tonight, so looks like Van Cleve lining up for the two-point conversion. Don't know why, but man in motion from right to left. Parker looking to throw, has a man on the 
and just out of the reach of the intended receiver, number two, I mean, I couldn't get a number on that, but with it, Went incomplete, so it's going to be 19-13 Hancock leads, and this offense needs to get it together. And we'll be right back after these messages. Hey, neighbors. Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune has a great deal on a new 2022 Catalina Trailblazer 28-foot toy hauler trailer. This unit has a slide-out king bed, 18-foot awning with lights, 15-foot garage, and only weighs 7,200 pounds. MSRP 53,237, reduced to only 38,872. Make that short drive to the Yune. You'll be glad you did. Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. We're not that far from where you are. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. Van Cleve lining it up to kick it off. Back deep is number four, Mason Kramer, and number 33. Dustin Coleman. Dustin Flash Coleman. I think I'm going to go with Flash. Nice little nickname for him. Kicker looks like he's going to either do a uh, line up for like the onside kick or the little sky kick. I guess that's TBD to be determined. He's not kicking it deep, though. No. Nah. He... Little sky kick. Looks like it's going to be caught by Coleman. Coleman finds a hole. Gets to the outside. Got one man. Puts a move on him. Gets past the 50. Brought down in Bulldog territory at the 47-yard line. Nice return by Destin, Destin Coleman. Looks like it was probably a 27-yard return by Destin Coleman to bring it into Bulldog territory. But we got to do something with it. Yeah. Moore ran 0 for 5 on his last five pass attempts. This offense has to get going somehow. One of them was an interception. Running game hasn't really been there since late, since early in the first, uh, the beginning of the second quarter. Moore in shotgun, hands it off to Coleman. Coleman finds a hole, and he gets, he gets absolutely demolished by the Bulldog linebacker. And fumbles it, picked up five yards, but he got picked up and power drive to the ground. Beautiful form tackle by number 15, Ethan Davis of the Bulldogs. And Coleman turns it over, and, and Bulldogs get the ball right back. And momentum's in their favor. You got to hold on to the ball right there. You, yeah, can't, you can't let it, you can't. You can't, you got to, when you go between the tackles, you got to cover it up with two arms, or both yeah. arms. And That's when you got to clamp down on it and put your head forward and just run. Looked like 61 was coming off the field a little shaken up for the Hawks, landing DeWitt uh, from the offense. So Van Cleef back in the shotgun. Maybe they saw something they like. Throwing a little swing rod. That's a fumble, actually. And... The backwards lateral pass, that, that actually would have been a fumble, folks, if Hancock would have fell on it since it was a kind of like a backward lateral. And that's that's going to be a 10-yard loss on that play. You can't really, I mean, even though he threw it, it wasn't really a pass. It's going to go down as a run. 10-yard loss, I, I don't know what number that was. But it's going to be second and 20 for the Bulldogs. Back in the shotgun, running back to the right. Two left, two right. Looking to throw it across the middle. Man, wide open down the seam. And Parker threads the needle and hits number nine, David Harris Jr., for a 22-yard gain and a Bulldog first down and brings it into uh, Hancock territory. This Van Cleve offense found something, hit them with the run all the first half, and now they got them in the, in the spread. Coming out throwing the football. And Parker threw an uh, absolute bullet down the seam. Hancock needs to wake up on defense and figure something out. Oh, this could be an upset tonight. Parker takes the snap and rolls and just runs right. Looks like a design quarterback run to the right side and picks up about two and a half yards. Going to bring up second and about eight. 
That was uh, number three, Jasper Talley on the tackle. I don't know what's going on. As everybody's grouped up, four minutes and 16 seconds left here in the third quarter. Looked like the Van Cleve coach was in the huddle. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if there doesn't seem to be a timeout was called. Looks like the white cap and the line judge were discussing something. Looks like he might be running over maybe the... Oh, it was a false start on the Bulldogs. Flag was way on the sideline drop by the line judge on the Hancock side. Didn't even notice the one was thrown because it was blocked by all the players. Yeah, I didn't see it. You know, they, they usually you usually just back up five yards. I don't know what the discussion's about right here. If it's a false start, it's from the line of scrimmage, not where the quarterback went out of bounds. So yeah, there they go. They back up five. So it should be first down all over again. Make it first and fifteen. See if one of these Hawk players can come up and make a play right here. Um, Van Cleve. Showing a little bit of throwing action right here. A quarterback in the shotgun. Three receivers to the left, running back to his right, running, uh, wide receiver to the right. Gets the snap, looking to throw. Has a man down the seam and bounces it off the turf. Going to be second and 15. Didn't really have anybody there. I don't know if he was just trying to get rid of it. Uh, really didn't even come anywhere near the receiver right there. That looked like one of those ones where it was like he already knew where he was going with the ball before yeah. he was just trying to get it to the to the spot. So same formation, well, not, not the same formation. It's two receivers to the left, to the right, one in the motion, right to left. Parker looking to throw. Come back route, and it's caught. It's going to be complete. Looks like for 13 yards, it's going to bring up third and two. Uh, actually, that was uh, 11 yards. It's going to, let's say 12 yards. It's going to bring up third. Third and about long three right here for Van Cleve. See if this Hawks defense can make a stop right here. Power pitch to the right, Peterson. And Looks he like he got enough. He's gonna get the first down. Picked up just enough. Picked up just enough for the first down. Looked like a needed three, got three and a half. Give him four on the carry. Gonna bring out first down and ten for the Bulldogs. With three minutes and twenty-four seconds on the clock. Got it at the Hancock Hawk 29 yard line. Hand off to Peterson. He's going to be met right away. Looks like it was a one yard loss right there. Looks like the tackle was made by number 53, Jerry Smith. Shout out to Jerry. Good play right there, my guy. That's my guy right there, Jerry Smith. Good play, buddy. Quarterback in the shotgun. Rolls left. Looking to throw. Pulls it down. Looks like that's holding right there by number nine, but nothing gets called. 
That definitely looked like an obvious holding call to me. It's going to be third and four for the Bulldogs after about a five-yard carry. This Hawk defense needs to come up with some sort of stop here. Here they go in the power, in the power, uh, I don't even know what to call this. I've never seen this formation with two fullbacks. Either. One to the right and one to the left. It looks almost like a power diamond formation. It's definitely new to me. Little power pitch. Looks like he picks up, he needed four, picked up five for the first down. Keeps the Keeps the chains moving for the Van Cleef Bulldogs. This game is going more and more in the momentum of the Van Cleef Bulldogs fans, and it's not looking good for Hancock. First and 10 at the 16. First and 10 at the Hawk 16-yard line. Same formation, little power diamond. Power pitch to the right. Looks like there's a flag on the play. I don't know if that looks like it might be face mask on Hancock. So that's a penalty we didn't need. No, you definitely don't need that when you have your opposing team driving in your own territory. You know, and Hancock's thinking right now that wide open touchdown that Neil Acker dropped could be the lead, could be the score. The factor. Yeah, could could possibly be. Because Van Cleef scores right here and kicks the extra point. They'll be up by a point. Van Cleaver in the power diamond, that's what I'm going to call it, power diamond formation. Hand off to Peterson around the right side. Hit right away by Hopgood, drags him for a few. Don't bring up second down. Maybe got a yard on the play. Looks like it's going to be first down, I mean second down and goal at the eight, seven, six, six yard line. Yep. Power diamond formation. Power pitch again to Peterson. Same He's result. Met in the backfield, in the backfield this time and may have lost a yard. No Bring it up third down. Hawks are trying to show up here in the red zone. Need the fans to get loud right here. Put some pressure on this Van Cleve offense. Need the defense to show up right here, folks. Third and goal at the six. Power diamond formation. Parker trying to get his linemen together. Rolls to the left, and he's going to be stopped. He tried to keep it, and he stopped by, it looks like, Jasper Talley. Yep, that is Jasper. At the four-yard line. Now, this is going to be huge for the Hawks defense and the Van Cleve Bulldog offense right here. It's going to be fourth down and goal. And it looks like this is going to bring it to the fourth quarter. Four fingers up in the air. We need it. It's coming down to this 19 to 13 going into the fourth quarter. And Van Cleve has the ball fourth and goal at around the three yard line. See if we can get a stop right here. And we'll be right back after these messages. Dr. Hermain Almonte, Medical Trauma Director, Highland Community Hospital. Trauma is one of the leading causes of death and disability, especially in the younger population in the United States. It is of critical importance to have access to an excellent hospital ready for your needs. Here at Highland, we have the most qualified staff and the newest technology. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. Please call 601-358-9400 or visit highlandch.com. 
Welcome back, Hawk fans. Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing it to you live. It's getting good. This is what football is all about. Fourth quarter. Fourth down at the four. Good. Four, four, four. Fourth quarter. Fourth down. Four-yard line. A lot of force going on here. What we need is a forced turnover on downs right here. We need the Hancock defense to step up and create a stop. Get the offense back on the field. It's going to be bad field position. I mean, it's going to be horrible starting field position, but nonetheless, you got to keep this Bulldog offense out of the end zone. They score, they could potentially go up and take the lead. And that is not what you want to fear the Hawks. Miscues on the special teams block next to point. That could be another point on the board right now. It could be 20 yeah. to 13. And then having to go for it. Uh, not having to go for it, but going for it on for two and not not uh, completing it. Could have been a potentially another two points on the board, which would have Hancock in the lead. But nonetheless, here we are, 19 to 13. Fourth down and go at the four-yard line. And you got to imagine, Dre, that it's probably going to Peterson right here. I unless, unless they fake it and the quarterback keeps it. And up to Peterson. And he's in the end zone for the third time tonight, folks. Four-yard touchdown. And that brings him halfway to his total from last week. Just ran completely over the right side. Uh, well, you know, the offense's left side and the right side of that Hancock defense. Was no push up front at all whatsoever. No. And when you can't win that battle. The battle starts in the trenches. So pinning the extra point right here. We got a tie ball game. Cleveland looks like they're still going to elect to kick the extra point to take the one-point lead after the uh, offsides on the Haycock uh, defense. If we could somehow get a block right here and keep this game tied. That'd be pretty huge. Sides again by number 33 this time, Destin Coleman trying to time the snap to try to get back there to block the extra point. See what Van Cleve does. See now you wonder if he put the offense on the field. I mean, you kind of, I, I kind of actually wanted to go for two and maybe, you know, have a better chance at stopping an offensive play than an automatic extra point. Yeah. I think Van Cleve knows better than that and they're just going to try to keep the kick the extra point for the lead. Which we probably should have did earlier. I'd say so too. We kicked the extra point early instead of going for two, and then we're looking at a, a, a potential, potential tie, tie right here. See if Coleman can guess the snap, and he, and he jumps off sides again. again. He's he's anti. He's trying to get back there, and I don't think Lala's upset with him for for trying. You. you, you <laughs> I want my fastest guy to try to get that. Yeah. Get that uh, block. Coleman looking to answer again off the corner. And almost gets there, but it's through. And Van Cleef takes the lead. The first time your Hancock Hawks have trailed this season. And they now trail 20 to 19 against the visiting Van Cleef Bulldogs. And if we don't find something to get something together on this offense, we're, we're going to. It's not going to be good for the Hawks. We'll be right back after these messages. 
craving a breakfast toaster or French toast sticks? Make it a meal and step up your breakfast with tots and a cold beverage. Sonic Drive-In has the perfect portable breakfast, and it's the perfect way to start your day. And at Sonic Drive-In in Picayune, you can stop by any time because breakfast is served all day. Sonic Drive-In of Picayune on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North. Start your day Sonic style with happy eating at its best. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In of Picayune. Destination delicious. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. Aaron Underwood here. Andre Underwood. Guys, it's a ball game, Dre. Hawks trail for the first time this year. 20 to 19 at home versus the Vancouver Bulldogs. Let's see if they can overcome adversity. Now the question is, if Hancock scores, do you go for two to be up by seven, or do you kick the extra point and be up by six? So onside kick by Van Cleveland is going to be recovered by the Hawks. By Casey Lee at the 40-yard line. So not bad starting field position. Let's see if Dylan Moray can get it together in this Hawks offense because he hasn't been he hasn't been himself tonight. Quite frankly, he's been kind of off. Other than that last pass to Neil Acker that should have been caught for the 24-yard touchdown, he's been off pretty much all night. I don't know what Hancock uh, offense sees with this Van Cleve defense that they can't expose them through the air. But we'll see. Moran in the shotgun. Man in motion right to left. Hand off the Gulong around the right side. Nowhere. Maybe a yard. He hasn't, like got it. he hasn't got it going either. Looks like they gave him a yard, maybe two. Yeah, it looks like they gave him actually two yards on the carry, so it's going to be second and eight at the 42-yard line. Hancock needs to create some uh, holes like they did in the, in the first half. Shotgun formations, two receivers to the left. Looking to throw, has a man out in the flats. Mason Kramer. Brings it to about the 49-yard line. Just shot right. the first down. Going to be shot. That's going to be a completion for seven yards. Seven-yard completion to Kramer. Dylan has to feel good about that one. Yeah, get his confidence up, back up a little bit. Maybe get know. his mojo back. After, you know, five straight incompletions. Coleman in the backfield to the left of uh, Dylan Moran. Two receivers to the left. Kramer now in the backfield. Hand off to Kramer around the left side. Got a hole. And nice run by Kramer bringing it to the Van Cleve 40. 42-yard line. And that's an eight-yard carry by Kramer. And a hawk first down. Bring it into Van Cleve territory. Christian Chain, Hawks at the 42. Actually, a nine yard carry on the run. More ran in the shotgun, two receivers to the right, running back to his right. Kramer in motion. Hand off to Coleman around the left side. Looking for a cutback. Got his hands on his blocker's back and he puts his head down and just goes forward. Looks like he picks up four yards. Gonna bring up second and six. It looked like there he kind of created his own cutback lane. He did, and I thought he was gonna cut it back more to the right. And if he would have, I think he would have. I know he would have had all day to run. Yeah. So second and six for the Hawks offense. Moran in the shotgun. Man in motion left to right. Little pitch to Coleman and Bulldog shoots the backfield and that's going to be a loss of a yard for Coleman. Bringing up third and long for the Hawks. This Hawk offense just looks out of sync. They don't look like they did in the first half. Or like they did versus the, the Blue Devils. Yeah. You just got to be up for these games. It's a home game. You, 
these are the games you got to be up for. You can't. You, you got to put it together. Murray in the shotgun. Rolls right. And he's going to be sacked by number eight. And Hawks turned the ball over on down. Oh, it's going to bring a fourth down. I'm sorry. Fourth and so you very got, long. You got to believe Lala's going to punt it right here. As Finn uh, Cowan comes out on the field. Five-yard sack, six-yard sack on the play. And that sack was by number eight, Brady Dowdy. You know, Van Cleve on a 20 nothing run after being behind 19 nothing early. Looks like there was a penalty against Hancock. Going to back it up five more yards. As if Van Cleve needs five more extra yards of field position right now. I definitely don't. And these are the type of penalties I was talking about. You can't, you can't commit. That ball did not go out of bounds right there. That ball went out of bounds right there, but whatever. <laughs> Van Cleve looks like they're going to take over first and 10 at the 35-yard line. We'll be right back after these messages. First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. First Place Express Car Wash is happy to serve their local community with two locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and on Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4. First Place Express Car Wash is locally owned and operated. You know they'll treat you right. Choose from any one of their car washes. Sign up for their monthly wash club starting as low as $20.99. Why do it yourself when you can let First Place Express Car Wash do it for you? Both locations offer a variety of wash packages to help fit your vehicle's individual needs. And each wash purchase includes a free vacuum. Try their ceramic coating to keep your vehicle's paint stay fresh and protected. First Place Express Car Wash provides your vehicle with that perfect shine every time. And they will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. That was the first down run by uh, Peterson for four yards, and then the second down run just happened. It looked like he picked up seven, seven yards and a first down for the Bulldogs. Diamond, power diamond formation for Van Cleve. They look like you can probably just to run this clock out as much as possible. A little power pitch again to Peterson. Last time be, he's met. He's going to be stopped for a one-yard gain. Going to be second and nine. Hancock running out of time here with the with the clock. Going to be constantly running with this, this Peterson running the ball every play. Six minutes, 38 seconds left on the clock. Gonna bring up second and nine. Van Cleve moving left to right on your radio dial. We're live on WRJW, 1320 AM. Time out Van Cleve as the play clock was running out. As, as it was about to be a delay game, Van Cleve calls a timeout, so we'll be right back after these messages. First Southern Bank believes that banking should be personal and convenient, and that's exactly the type of service you will receive at First Southern Bank. 
Open your account at First Southern Bank at 1321 Highway 43 North in Picayune, and you can experience a true hometown banking experience. First Southern Bank is personal enough to handle all your banking needs and big enough to handle all your mortgage needs. Convenient locations, personal friendly service, and mortgage experts. That's First Southern Bank, true hometown banking at its best. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. It's Aaron Underwood. Andre Underwood. Bringing it to you live on WRJW 1320 AM. Catch us streaming the game, calling it on the uh, Hancock County School District uh, YouTube page. Second and nine, Van Cleve. They bring back out the shotgun formation. Quarterback gets it. Looks like a design quarterback run. He keeps it. Going to pick up. Probably about four yards. Going to bring up third and five. Huge third down right here for Hancock. This defense definitely needs to come up big right here. Maybe a penalty on the play. Maybe a hold or something. Looks like they... Yep. Holding on the Bulldogs. Holding on the Van Cleve Bulldogs. Going to back them up. You're liking that if you're Hancock here. Gonna be at the 34 yard line. Bringing up second and forever for Van Cleve, so. Second and 21 for the Van Cleve Bulldogs. Shotgun formation. Can't get beat right here. Gotta make a play. Quarterback rolling right. Throwing the seam across the middle. Wide open again to number 12. Same play they called up earlier. Going to be a 20-yard reception and bring up third and one. I don't know how you don't remember getting beat by that play earlier. And you just let the same play happen again. Just, just They're just playing poor Simon football right now, folks. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're they're doing their jobs out there. You know, when it's second and twenty-one, you can't give up twenty yards on a pass right down the middle of the field. It, it just it can't happen. You, you can't win ball games that way. You have to have somebody right there covering that. Uh, you got you got to get somebody in in the, in the face of the quarterback. Some yeah. pressure. We haven't had pressure on this guy all night. Somebody eventually has to decide to make a play. Whether it's one of the big boys up front or one of these linebackers, maybe on a blitz. So you know they're going to come out with the power diamond formation. Going to do a little toss, probably to the right side right here. See if somebody can make a play. Oh, they go off the left tackle. And Peterson's going to pick up four yards and a bulldog first down. Pressure's getting put on. Five minutes, 35 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Van Cleve leads on the road here in Hancock. Kill Mississippi 20 to 19. Power diamond formation, power pitch to the left. No pressure, just Picked up about a, maybe a yard or two on the play. Gonna bring up second and eight for the Bulldogs. I don't understand how we got like shooting gaps, clogging holes, oh, no. containing when we see that formation. This defense is uh, looking the complete opposite of how they were in the first half. Four minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. Second and eight. Power pitch to the left. And probably about a four yard carry. Gonna bring up third and three, four, third and three, third and a long three, three and a half, somewhere up in there.
Just a regular eye formation right here. Quarterback looked like he's looking at the play clock, letting it run down. It's at about 11 now. That should have been a false start on the quarterback. But fire pitch to Peterson. And it looks like he's not going to get the first down initially. See if he fell, fell forward. They got him at the 29. And enough for the first down. And four yards on the carry for another Bulldog first down. Three. Hawks running out of time here. Three minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. Quick power pitch. Gets the outside. Picks up about 14 yards and a Bulldog first down. Hancock needed the Lions just getting whipped up front, but there's a flag on the play back here, so that play might be nullified. Yeah, it's coming back. Looks like it might have been holding. Three minutes, 17 seconds left on the clock. I'm gonna back the ball back all the way to the 40, 41 of Hancock. Somebody needs to blow that play up, man. Looks like they're discussing something. And while they discuss whatever it is they're discussing, we're going to hear a message from Dixieland Home Farm. This hunting season, hurry to Dixieland Home Farm and Garden for the gear to get you closer. All outdoors can know that success begins with preparation knowing what to plant and when to plant. And Dixieland offers soil testing, plot mixes, and fertilizer. And they have a large variety of sporting goods, ammunition and targets, summit and millennium stands, scent control and ground blinds, and now hunting and fishing licenses. For great deals and friendly service, it's Dixieland Home Farm and Garden, Highway 603 in the Kill, just north of Rocky Hill Dito Road. Open every day, 8 till 6. Find us on Facebook. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. Aaron Underwood here. Andre Underwood here. Bringing it to you live. Your Hawks trail 20 to 19 at home versus the Van Cleve Bulldogs with three minutes and 17 seconds left on the clock. Penalty on the Bulldogs last play, bringing it back to about the 41 yard line. Going to make it first and 20. Bulldogs with the one point lead on the road. Parker under the center. Peterson behind the fullback. False start right there maybe by Van Cleve. Looked like the left guard jumped. See, he caught it off sides. The, the, they caught offside on the defense, but the Van Cleve off of the lineman definitely jumped. So, Going to bring up first and 15. That offensive line looks a lot bigger than the picture you showed me, Jay. Yeah. High formation. Another offsides on offsides the Hawks. Offsides on the Hawks again. They're getting them with a double, like the, the Lions got their hands on their knees and then get set, and then that's when Hancock's jumping. I, 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 do, I don't, I, I really, I don't get it. So what went from first and 20. To first and 10, back when we the, started. First and 20 at the 41 to two offside penalties and first and 10 at the 31.
I formation. Power pitch for a loss in the backfield. Let's see what the call is this time. Bring up second and ten right here. Time, Time out, out. For the Hawks. Time out, Hancock, with two minutes and thirteen seconds left on the clock. I don't know what happened. I don't know if there's a penalty that just happened, and I don't know why we would decline it. It was a uh, no gain on the play, but we'll be right back after these messages. Physical therapy has evolved into specialized care for patients suffering from Parkinson's disease. Dr. Jameson Dodd with Dodd Therapy Center in Picayune is LSVT Big certified for treatment of Parkinson's disease. LSVT Big trains people with Parkinson's to use their body more normally and improves movements for any activity, whether small motor tasks like buttoning a shirt or large motor tasks like getting up from a sofa or chair or maintaining balance while walking. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call today at 769-242-2636 or stop by at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune. All right, welcome back, Hawk fans. This game is coming down to the wire. Hancock needs to find a way to get the ball back. That dropped wide open pass in the end zone is haunting Hancock right now. You could only imagine how Neil Acker feels about that drop. Yeah, Dylan Moran put it on the money. He was wide open in the end zone, it too. A, it was a great route, great pass. Just don't know how you drop it. formation. Pitch to Peterson. He's go. still going. Still on his feet. Picks up about nine yards. Going to bring up second and one. This game might be out of reach for Hancock. They might not be able to get the ball back. Yeah, this time's just ticking away. Yard carry second and two for the Bulldogs. They just letting the clock run out. Minute and 35 seconds left. Snap it. Power pitch to the left. Peterson picks up the first down, and that could be it, folks. That might as well. That might have just put the game away. They can basically deal it from this point out with a minute and 20, 28 eight seconds left on the clock. Very disappointing at the leading early, 19 to nothing, and nothing. Van Cleve come back and score 20 unanswered points. They basically just need to kneel the ball now. Looks like that's what they're going to do. Knee it four times to get out of here. Great effort by the Van Cleve Bulldogs to come to, Hank, uh, to kill Mississippi right far field and come back, overcome adversity in the first part of the game and score, score 20 unanswered. 20 unanswered to take this victory on the road, give them their first win, uh, I mean their second win on the season. Hancock's Hanks, first loss. Hancock's first loss. And now you want to. Uh, <laughs> 
Now you want to hit somebody. And that's going to do it. And, and that's the ball game, folks. Your, uh, your Hancock Hawks drop one at home against the Van Cleve Bulldogs. Twenty to nineteen, Van Cleve wins on the road here and kill Mississippi at Brett Farm Field. Tough loss for the Hawks, Drake. Um, I guess you know the man of the game just put everything on his back. John Peterson. John Peterson, you know, was as advertised, and I'd have to say he was better than uh, he looked better against us this year than Dion Bilbo did last year. I would say so. 